Hey, sports, fitness, and movie fans. This is your host, Coach Frank. And this is show producer, Frank Sardella. And we're here to launch season five of the Sporting Good Posture podcast, where we take you back, back to, to the, the future. future. Join us today as we kick off season five of the Sporting Good Posture podcast. It's a very special season for the both of us. I'd say so. It's going to be a great season, and our mutual love of Back to the Future is finally culminating into a whole season of episodes, part of my evil plan. (laughs) Absolutely, man. I've been waiting for this a long time. I'm super excited for you to take it away, Coach. So gas up the DeLorean. Get your flux capacitor ready. We're getting up to 1.21 gigawatts. Don't forget to bring extra plutonium. Oh, yeah. How would I ever get back? And we'll bring that to you more (laughs) right after this. Let's do this. Game on, sports, fitness, and health fans, with another episode of the Sporting Good Posture Digital Radio Experience. Gear up for Coach Frank's advice from the sidelines as he helps you crush your game. No matter what sports, health, or fitness game you play. Hey, this is Coach Frank. I'm Sporting Good Posture. What are you sporting? Hey, Coach, what do you got for us today? Welcome back to this very special episode of Sporting Good Posture. This is Coach Frank here, and I'm happy to have my producer, Frank Sardella, here with me today. And we're going to talk about Back to the Future, one of our favorite movies of all time. I'll say. That's all we talk about all the time. (laughs) Basically. Most of the clips we have are from from the movie. Coach, I don't think that uh, your listeners know the magnitude of the Back to the Future references because they go far beyond the podcast. This is mild compared to the amount of references per day. It's not even per week that we make here. So. Yeah. And when we try to record an episode, we have to get about 15, 20 minutes out of the way of talking about Back to the Future before we actually get started on the podcast. That's right. And folks, you know, as uh, Coach is a huge fan of Cobra Kai and the Karate Kid, and we did uh, season four very much on that motif. I actually insisted that we do it. But uh, when I was trying to think up what we need to do for season five, I was like, how appropriate, you know, being a wellness advocate and chiropractic advocate myself, thinking about the whole Back to the Future motif, we're such nuts for Back to the Future, uh, reference it constantly. We have little clips in the, <laughs> in the series and the show. Coach, I mean, how many times when it comes on TV lately, when the trilogy's on, do we stop what we're doing and just watch all three movies? More often than not lately, because <laughs> they've been running it all over television. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, basically at any time during the day, you could probably turn on the TV and there'll be the trilogy on one of the channels. And it never so gets... I'm always trying to catch it. And it's and it's funny, because I have old. the movies here, yeah. but when it's on TV, it's like, okay, I got to stop what I'm doing to watch it. That's right. So how appropriate would it be for season five for us to do this? Only because the whole Back to the Future concept is perfect about going back to the beginning when something occurred that created a timeline of events that ended up in disaster, essentially, and going back to the beginning. And it's it's so parallel to our chiropractic message that we've been pushing here and our message on function and structure and posture and all that. Um, you know, it was kind of a no-brainer to come up with this season. And um, yeah, Coach, um, why don't we tell them about some of the, some of the stuff we're going to do this season based on that motif? This Saturday is November 5th, which in the movie, yeah. if you watch Back to the Future, he went back on a Saturday, November 5th, 1955. So this season will be released on November 5th, 2022, 67 years after 67 Marty years. went back in time. That's right. Which very, very appropriate. I can't wait. On a Saturday. So, <laughs> exactly. And you're, of course, already listening to this episode on or after that date. But yeah, so... uh the, the motif is actually going to be like about cause and finding cause. So, you know, we should talk a little bit about that. We've got a lot of great stuff for this season, Coach, don't we? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have a bunch of new guests lined up, athletes, coaches, health professionals. We have a great lineup of people that we're going to be interviewing this year. And then also going back to what you're saying about that timeline, if you watch the movie, you can really see the events that happen that can change the course of time. Yeah. And Marty went back in time and almost messed up basically him being born. If you remember the movie, that's right. He, he met his, his parents, he got in the way of his parents meeting. Yeah. And it almost made him not exist in 1985. However, when he However. <laughs> fixed it and yep. actually he set things really super right, Because they weren't exactly, the way George and Lorraine's life turned out was not great, but the changes that he made actually fixed the future. 
and uh, made it an optimum future. He had his uh, Statler Toyota uh, <laughs> four by four. Yeah. Uh, his, his dad was a successful writer. His brother and sister were successful, you know, yeah, all that stuff. His mom wasn't drinking anymore. Yeah. So it was so appropriate to, to that. And it also, you know, it shows how things can go wrong from a source and how far off track they can go, which I'm in love with, you know, just as somebody who lectures on this stuff all the time, why did, why didn't I think sooner than this to make the back to the future reference and the <laughs> literally <laughs> hundreds of talks I've given on the subject? I can't believe I never thought of that. Uh, not even on my own podcast did I did I uh, think of doing that. So, um, but I guess it took two Back to the Future fans to uh, to pull yeah. this off. But even in Back to the Future too, I mean, they went to the future and made mistakes and sent someone back from the future all the way back to 1955, who then changed the timeline for the bad again. Um, and yep. then that timeline actually skewed from there and made an even worse future. So they had to go back to November 5th, 1955 again. Uh, yep. So I guess metaphorically speaking, maybe the cause of all structural imbalances and all these things that cause all the problems people have from pain to inflammation to weight loss um, can, kindly, uh, can kind of be represented by that metaphor. I, I'm in love with the season, Coach. I am too. And, and you're right. I, I don't know why we didn't think of it earlier. We've kind of hinted at it, but we never really took off with it. So I'm yeah. glad that we that we finally did this. Yeah. But you're right. Like going back through that movie, you can see all the things that happened. And then, yeah, and going into the second one where Biff went back and gave his younger self the gray sports almanac, which then Biff used to get rich and famous and buy a casino and a hotel and basically <laughs> own the town and own the police and he could do whatever he wanted. And he married Lorraine exactly. and he ended up killing George the fly, <laughs> Marty's dad. <laughs> and and committing Doc Brown. Right, and committing Doc Brown into a mental institute. Exactly. And then how skewed it was and how bad the city was when, when Biff was in charge of, of everything. And yeah. And it just goes to show how the effects from years ago can can catapult you into the wrong timeline if you don't figure out, okay, where do these problems start? How did they happen? What do we need to do to find out exactly what it was? And then change your, your course of time, skew your timeline in, in the direction where it'll help you and not hurt you. 100%. And uh, what I'm looking forward to, folks, is uh, getting Coach to actually sort of bring this analogy to every one of the areas in which he's skilled, you know, how this applies to weight loss. If you could get in the DeLorean, literally, and punch in a date and time of when the, the, the mistake occurred, that led to a series of other errors on top of it that led you to where you are with your weight today or your nutritional health today, you know, just on that alone or accumulated excess fat that you now can't get rid of. And you're now trying to fight in the present when you really need to go sort of back to the past to find out, all right, where did it begin and what caused it? You know, even in part three, coach, I mean, uh, you know, the 1855 timeline, uh, when, yeah. they, when they had to go back there, they made some changes back there. And when they came back, Clara hadn't died. It was now Eastwood Ravine uh, yeah. after his uh, pseudonym. His Marty went over the cliff instead <laughs> of the teacher. Yeah. Exactly. But there were improvements made, including Marty not getting into trouble and getting into a car accident in the future. So, so many parallels on that, not just weight loss, but, um, you know, if we look on the chiropractic side, you being a doctor of chiropractic and the whole timeline of structure and function going off balance, function being interfered with and then accumulating over time into what you have now. And now you're trying to fight now what you have when you really need to get into that DeLorean. Like, what would it look like to get into the DeLorean, go back to the past? I mean, you're the doctor, you're the expert on this, coach. I well, one of the things that I noticed the most is... I was thinking about just now when Marty was in the first movie and he knew that Doc Brown was going to get shot in the future. And remember, he wrote that letter. That's right. And Doc Brown says, no one should ever know too much about their future. It's not good. And he ripped up the letter. And, you know, when Marty went back, he ended up living because he actually taped the letter back up and read it and kept it. It completely changed the whole timeline. But it just goes where I have somebody come in and if they would just kind of open their eyes and just be accepting of finding the changes that it really will lead you in the right direction. So a lot of the consults I have is going through that, 
sometimes it's just finding out and accepting that there was either a mistake or a problem or something that happened in the past, but there is a way to fix it. There is a way yeah. for your body to heal. That's right. And just That's like right. Doc Brown finally, you know, he said, all right, I'm going to read, read the letter. And when Marty asked him about it, he said, I thought, well, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's, it's worth a shot. It's always worth a shot. Your body can heal and it's worth a shot to change your future by, by kind of reliving your past and figuring out how to fix it. To put period to it, if you look at part three, where in Doc's letter, he warned Marty once he gets the time machine fixed to go home to 1985 yeah. and destroy the time machine. And uh, that was another parallel to like, you know, sort of not knowing your own future, not influencing the future or whatever, but actually, okay, fine. If we're going to build a real time machine and we're going to go back and say, oh, well, we could go back and kill Mussolini or, uh, you know do something, you Hitler know, before he was born or Hitler, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, all the cliche things people say about going back in time, you know, that's one thing that you don't know how one thing like that would influence world affairs when you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But something simple like your own future, you can predict it. And once you see that future, you can make changes now. Like why have to go back in time to trace down the causes of your structural imbalances to then fix your health now when you can right now look ahead to years from now look at your structure now and say where is it at what does my future look like from here and i think we're going beyond back to the future that's probably what we should call season five is beyond back to the future yeah i think that would be that's exactly what we're doing and if you remember in part three when jennifer showed doc that when he got fired it was erased and he said, your future's not yet written. Yeah, that's right. It is what you make of it. And right. it, it is. And just like right now, just because you may have something going on with your body, just because you may have been diagnosed with something, that doesn't, that doesn't define you. That doesn't make sure that that's your future. Your future can be changed. And right. I think people need to get in that mindset that it can be changed and, and there can be better days ahead. You just have to find out what's going on and know the direction to go to fix it. And sometimes a time machine is needed. As a matter of fact, most times a time machine is needed because, you know, if you listen to Coach's podcast here for any great length of time, chances are you're not an adolescent, you're an adult. So you've already yeah. had those experiences in your past. So yes, you can look at the path you're on to go to the future, but for that, you actually have to look at the past. And it's actually advantageous uh, if all healthcare would just subscribe to the flux capacitor principle of healthcare which yeah. is uh, fire up that flux capacitor and go back to the earliest time when your timeline got skewed. And actually, Coach, that's why I insisted on uh, doing this podcast all those years ago, because it's a concept that you put into practice there, and it's something that people really, really need to know, that it's important to go back as far as possible and find out where did the person's timeline go askew and that's actually the secret to your success in practice right now with uh, your Chirothin program and in conjunction with the LipoLaser rapid weight loss, uh, treating inflammation and things like that. But all of that, including your chiropractic care, your handling of pain and inflammation and painful conditions and whatever, getting a yep. person to recover is predicated on you going back in time with the person to figure out what are all the things that happened that started this and that accumulated over the years to leave them where they are. In other words, uh, uh, folks, your desk uh, that you sit at every day or whatever you do now is not the cause of whatever's going on with you now. And I think that's the point uh, Doc puts together in his practice. And I insist on bringing that out in the podcast. And I think we're going to do that with a bullet this season with Beyond Back to the Future. That's exactly what I'm doing. When, when somebody comes in, we're really going through that timeline. And for sure. You know, we have that weight loss plan in place with the lipo laser in place, which has been a great program. We've done that for eight or nine years now, really. Yeah. And but what I've found over the eight or nine years now is I actually wasn't looking in the right places at first when I first started doing this. And the weight loss and the weight gain and the inch problem that, that somebody might have a lot of times is more a chiropractic issue that then the weight gain is a side effect of that. Right. And I've found that if we go through the timeline, it was maybe that knee injury that you had that, that made you stop running or going to the gym or that shoulder injury you had that you stopped working out 
or just something in general that happened to your, your body and typically to your spine where you stop being active or you have an injury that's ongoing, that's inflaming your body. It's, it's not going away. And then you're slowly gaining weight because of it. That's so right. That's, right. that's something that we've now discovered really over the last eight or nine years is really one of the biggest reasons why someone can't lose weight. And, and then if they do, they don't keep it off. Well, if you're really helping those underlying conditions and going through that timeline and fixing the things that led you to this problem, then you're actually going to fix it for the future. So that when you lose that weight, you're actually going to keep it off in, in the future, which is the goal for everybody. Right. That's 100% right. And, and I mean, just to go back to any kind of uh, time travel reference in any time travel movie, not just Back to the Future, but some of these time travel movies where they're trying to change the future by going back to the past, like Terminator or whatever, mm -hmm. to try and kill off the cause of the revolution before there's even need for a rev revolution. Or the concept where I saw a movie recently where they were going back to kill the baby version of someone to just change the timeline to make sure they were never born. Your timeline goes even back to birth. Coach here is saying, you know, oftentimes, like you trace it back to that knee injury you had when you were, uh, you know, a young adult, uh, perhaps that everything went off the track there. But what did you bring into that knee injury in the first place? You had a track earlier than than the knee injury. You had things yeah. that led up to that that made you weak enough to get injured in that situation. Going into any kind of basic injury situation where you get hurt, uh, oftentimes you get more hurt than you would have had you not had the timeline before you. So there's even beyond Back to the Future there where you could say, all right, well, it all started with this injury, but well, what really led you up to that injury? And were you really you know, structurally fit when you went into the situation that got you injured? So that's, that's what I'm in love with about your programs, about how they uh, uh, are predicated on that timeline and really tracing it back to say, all right, here's the actual cause. Let's treat that. And then everything sort of works out for the future. It just changes pretty automatically. I mean, yeah. it's not overnight, but pretty automatically it changes. And then all of a sudden the condition starts going, the person starts to lose weight or the person starts to feel better. They start to sleep better or they stop having pain so much, you know all these things actually naturally occur because you said, all right, let's not look at that. That's telling us to go back to the future kind of thing. Just last week, I had a patient come in and we took some x-rays on her and I, I immediately, I was looking at the x-rays. I'm like, something doesn't look right in here. And when I looked at it later, I could tell there had been some kind of trauma. Yeah. And when I went over the x-rays with her at a report of findings, I said, Hey, I said, your neck just doesn't look right there. And she couldn't remember anything. I said, I said, it looks like there was a car accident some, sometime 20 to 30 years ago, probably around the time you were a teenager, high school um, or college age. I said, that's that's what I'm seeing on, on this. That's the kind of timeline I would see for an injury like this. And she said, you know what? I was in a major car accident about 27 years ago, and I went and I slammed my head into the windshield. And I didn't go through the windshield, but it, it basically made my neck like an accordion. Yeah. And that's where that damage took place. And, and sure enough, you know, you're a kid, you kind of blow it off, you kind of work through it. It's not that bad. But as you, you know, 20, 30 years later, now it's a problem. So she had a bunch of degeneration in her neck. But from doing that, it was basically like a predictor that I could tell that that was the timeline that she had gotten in that car accident. Yeah. So it's it's funny because every day is like going back to the future. You know, it's going back in the past, f figuring out where this thing come from. A lot of time when I'm looking at x-rays, I'm trying to figure out the timeline of when this damage occurred. And I'm typically pretty close to being right about when the, when that timeline is, which, which I think is good because my, my patients trust me when they, when they go over this thing with me and I'm coming up with things that they forgot. And then they're like, wow, that that's exactly what it was. It was a car accident 27 yeah. years ago. Yeah. We're going to get people to think, and uh, we're going to get people to go back to the future for sure and change their yeah. timeline. I think it's going to be great. Although all that notwithstanding, and, and uh, as incredible of a doctor you are and all these years, we've been working, I think, 10 years or more together now, yeah. um, and all the m amazing things I've said about you as a doctor, and everything said here was true, all of that notwithstanding, 
I'm still more excited about the Back to the Future references. We're going to possibilities <laughs> we're going to have this season. Great Scott. Uh, oh, man. I just, I, as, as a matter of fact, as you were talking there with that last point you made, I'm thinking to myself, Back to the Future 3, sure hope you're thinking about the future, <laughs> Coach Frank. <laughs> Mr. Eastwood. <laughs> I, th- oh, yeah. I think about it all the time. <laughs> oh man, you know, I mean, I mean, the the references are just going to be endless. You know, it could be like after you get a treatment from you, where did you learn to adjust like that? Seven <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. They just opened a Seven Eleven down the street from my house. The first time I've seen one oh, man. since I lived in New York. There's oh, one man. like about a mile down the street, and I took my kids for the first time. To get Slurpees. Oh, boy. Because they've only had Icy's. And I said, hey, there's a difference yeah, between, between Slurpees and Icy's. 100%. Slurpee is the, the OG. That's the that's the original. You got to have the Slurpee because that's that's where it started. Yeah. And for our weight loss folks in the in the, in the crowd, if we if I haven't cut this out and you're listening to it, <laughs> uh, Slurpees are not part of the Kyrothin program. I that's just right. want to add that <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> Here we are but talking everybody about... Everybody needs you, to have it at least just once. <laughs> just one time. Talk about the childhood timeline. Just you put a, a Slurpee one. in your child's past already now. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I, you know, I think in wrapping this up, uh, we've got quite a season five. We are going beyond Back to the Future to really bring this all together. And uh, I am going to make sure that I make sure Coach's door is even wider open than it was. I might take the damn thing off the hinges. Well, and just if make you it. Go through it with with the DeLorean, man. That that would go right through that <laughs> that brick wall there. Well, it's funny too. Maybe in closing, you know, I I actually think of, I actually get a picture in my mind every time you say the coach's door is always open. I picture you as a coach of a team sitting in an office, right, in the athletic center or whatever, wherever teams train and that type of thing, where the locker rooms are. But I kind of picture it as that glass enclosed office that Principal Strickland had uh, yeah. in Back to the Future 2 when he yep. was in there looking at what was apparently the sports almanac, uh, which had the sports almanac, which ended up having the sports almanac cover on it. And it was, uh, I think, Ooh La La magazine or something. Yeah. That been. <laughs> but for some reason, the picture I have is that exact enclosure. So I don't know if that says anything to our Back to the Future motif, but anyway. All right, Coach, I think you should wrap it up now. I think, uh, I think we've got people knowing what, what our okay. brainchild is all about here. So I hope you're as excited about this season as I am with Back to the Future references sprinkled in each episode coming up. But more importantly, I want you to really think about your timeline and go back in time and think about the things that have happened to you. Think about the things that you've accumulated in your in your lifetime, starting from when you were a kid to you're being an adult now. And again, if you see something skewed in your timeline and you need some help, you have some questions, remember my door is always open. The coach's door is always open. No, actually, wait. The the coach's DeLorean is always available. There you go. There you go, coach. Just know that I'm here for you. Reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram at Ideal Health and Wellness Center or reach out to me at the office at 615-567-6683. Tell me what's going on, and I'll tell you what I think. This is Coach Frank. I'm sporting a better future. How about you? That was good. That was good. The Sporting Good Posture Podcast is a broadcast wellness production powered by Ideal Health Wellness Center. All content copyright 2021. All rights reserved. Executive producer, Frank Sardella. Coach Frank appears courtesy of Ideal Health Wellness Center in Franklin. For more information, visit SportingGoodPosture.com and follow Coach on Instagram at SportingGoodPosture. Here's a date in scientific history. November 5th, 1955. That's that's a very interesting story, future boy. (laughs) But if me from the future is now in the past, how could you possibly know about it? (laughs) Okay, so let's have you do like a sit tight or strap in, dial in, uh, punch up, get your flux capacitor ready. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be a fun episode, Frank. We're just going to have fun with this. I think he stole his wallet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. that guy just stole his wallet <laughs> easy everybody calm down i know cpr what's cpr 
You. <laughs> <laughs>